my name's Sarah. I work with individuals on confidence, assertiveness, um, particularly at work. I work with small businesses, particularly businesses that have gone from being small that are growing into maybe 100, 150, and sort of helping them through the growing pains of going from a small business to a, a more bigger organisation and what, what that involves, and, and particularly office politics does come up quite a lot. I've worked in different organisations like Monarch Airlines, they're no longer with us, but I put them on there because when I was about 24, 25, I had my first bucket list. And on my bucket list was to be an air hostess. And I did that for six months as a summer contract. And I tell you, it's really hard work, I'm sure there were office politics and politics going on within the company, but our whole thing was about serving customers. And even though I knew that was a job I wasn't going to do forever, it really taught me a great lesson about how we are nothing without our customers for those of us in customer facing businesses. I found myself on a board at the age of 35, which was a pretty vulnerable to invincible moment, if I can say, uh, sort of being immersed in the world of mergers and acquisitions and things like that and sitting being the only female in the boardroom was quite an interesting challenge, but I thought, oh, sink or swim, so there we go. That's probably a bit of the inspiration for the book. This is a slide I never thought I'd produce. And yes, that's Mary Poppins, and yes, that's Darth Vader. But what has that got to do with office politics? Well, actually, when I've worked as a manager, I love getting the best out of people. I'm naturally effervescent, outgoing. Um, I see that as a strength, but for other people, they might not see it that way. They might see that as actually someone, oh, she's quite confident, or, oh, what's she doing making all these changes, you know. So I thought I'd go into defining office politics, or rather nicking it from, nicking the definition from Collins Dictionary. And the words that I've highlighted there, of course, organisation and workplace, but also personal relationships. So how do we summarise it? Relationships, as I've mentioned behaviours, power and status comes into play. Those might, might sound like negative words, but actually people do sometimes want to have status. They want to progress in their careers, and that's fine as long as it's not to the detriment of the business goals, the organisation and the relationships within them. What happens when it's bad? And again, relating to my earlier example, I have seen this happen and it does completely disrupt teams and stop progress. So as an employee, it can be really, really stressful and sometimes, you know, you have to reflect on your style and how it comes across to other people. Of course, we can't always keep everybody happy and I do believe in being true to yourself and authentic to, you know, to who you are as a person. And as a business owner, again, same problems and probably more problems than, than I've listed here, but stress affecting performance and morale. And once morale starts going, that can be very disruptive. So. Can we take a different slant on office politics? I like to try and see things from different viewpoints where I can. I don't know about you, but it has a reaction. It's a bit, ooh, that doesn't sound too healthy. Or I don't do office politics. But actually sometimes this is about relationships and it's about networking. Here's some survival tips uh, for employees. Think win-win, you know, um, in terms of what can you bring to the organisation? What does the organisation need to achieve? And sort of take things out of yourself a bit and try and depersonalise things as much as you can. And if you're running a business or you've got your own business, then again, there's a role there, I think, to really help your teams and your colleagues set up to succeed. And this sounds might sound quite basic actually, but surprising how many companies don't have this in place. And it's, it's sort of, oh, we don't have time to do it. But if you spend the time doing it, then it actually sets people up for success. But really, we are masters of our own destiny. Really. And, and, and somebody can only upset you as much as you let them upset you understand it and then think, okay, well, how can I bring my best game to the table? How can I really perform to the best of my ability? What does my boss expect of me? What do I expect of my team? Is that all really, really clear? And sort of be in charge of yourself rather than being hijacked by other people.